Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yes! Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> and I'm super excited to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop video. This time we're going to be taking a look at a teacher demonstration. I'll tell you what, I remember when I first started swing dancing and teaching, there was a lot of pressure to be able to get in front of an audience as a teacher and show your stuff. So I'm going to be looking for some very specific things and I'll tell you exactly what they are after the video. Let's get into it! This, this is interesting. Festi Swing Bres 2020 Demo de Pro. It looks like it's a French uh, event. So I'm going to be interested to see who's, who's actually the instructor. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They're like, ah, uh, how long are we gonna go? <laughs> They all come out. Sometimes they'll switch. I don't think they'll do it. Maybe they are. They kind of look like they're trying to. There we go. <clears throat> you got to show those students that you can actually lead and follow what they've been doing. Pretty fun, pretty fun. You always call me whenever somebody's near the
All right. All right. All right. Um, I got to tell you guys, I was looking for that word danger. Here's what I mean by the, that word danger. I was always, when I first came into the scene and I started teaching, I was wanting to find my spot. And I remember it was a lot more competitive back then where there were so many different people with so many different styles and everybody was vying for pos positioning. And I wanted to do whatever I could to put myself outside of the box. So people would say, this guy deserves to be in this spot as a master teacher. And so dangerous for me means who's willing to come out with some original ideas? Who's willing to take their personality on a high level and present that to people? And that's very hard to do, guys. It's scary. I got to tell you, as a, a up and coming instructor, there's a lot of peer pressure to fit in with those who are instructing you. I mean, obviously, we're not immune to being inspired. We were all students and went through the circuit and all the classes and we wanted to get better. But in that process, we had heroes who were teaching us. So there were a lot of like personality things that we would adapt um, based on just our affinity for what they were doing. And in many cases, as we got better, it was harder for us to go back to recognize the qualities that made us unique. And so back then, when it was, you know, my turn to kind of break through and be in the limelight to be a teacher, I was fighting hard to be dangerous. And there were a couple of other dancers that were fighting hard to be dangerous. And they stood out along with myself at that time. Not because we fit in and we looked exactly like our teachers. So usually when I watch social demos like this, that's the first thing I'm looking for is to see which couple is willing to actually put themselves out there, not just their carbon copy of everybody's favorite hero of the month. And so I'm gonna be honest, I didn't see a whole lot of newness here, not to say that these teachers can't actually provide you with something quality, which I would probably recommend them. Um, because first you've gotta learn how Lindy Hop works, the craftsmanship part of it. But at the same time, if I look at things like this and I go, well, what's next? Who's really the new teachers? I see copies of some of my teachers, and that was people who taught me years ago. But i would hardly ever seen new ideas, new personalities, fearless and dangerous instructors willing to come out there and be themselves. Now, the couple that I noticed the most that I would say um, stood out to me was the second couple. And the reason that this couple stood out to me uh, was how the leader was manipulating the energy with his partner. There was, a, there was a big contrast between their dancing and the other two couples. The other two couples kind of look like your favorite heroes of the month, kind of floating through the movements, everything looks predictable, all the same head movements, all the same styling, right? I, like, I liked their dancing, there was nothing wrong with it, but it was very derivative. But this middle couple, they were doing something a little different. I could see that the energy level was a little tighter. It wasn't as predictable and floaty. It was a little bit more rigid and they were playing with the levels of energy. I wouldn't say that it's 100% original to do that because there was, I was in this dichotomy. I had two styles of teachers. I had ninjammers, which are all about you know quick movements, bursts and spurts of energy colliding and hitting, moving and stopping. And then I had the silver shadows, which is all about the continuous movement philosophy, moving and keeping your partner moving and making your movements look predictable, the quality of the feeling of the, of the movement. And so there was this whole thing, this competition back then, and I don't, I don't really think it was necessary at the time. I looked at it as, you know, maybe the Bloods and the Crips, 
<laughs> the Jets and the Sharks. But really, they were kind of talking about two sides of the same coin. Except in many cases, people were arguing about, you know, if one's just performance and it's not good quality of movement. And the other one is super good quality of movement. That's social dance, right? And I was looking at it as, well, you can still social dance on this side and you can still social dance on this side. So it's more of a preference of how you manipulate it. And I think this couple in the middle was more on the side of what I would say is the ninjammer styling of moving, which is a lot of quick movements, uh, intensity changes. And uh, we're not really seeing a lot of that right now uh, for many other reasons why. And I think there's a, there's a lot that's being missed out on when we forget um, the ideas that were presented by people. When we forget the, the way you can manipulate the technique that makes you look different. And that couple in the middle, I wanna give them a shout out. They're my favorites, just watching. Cause I could say, yeah, I didn't see certain moves coming. I'm a little surprised by their movements. I was surprised by the mannerisms. I didn't see like they were just trying to imitate their friends or their teachers. They were just trying something different. And I like that. I like that. So if I were an instructor attending an event like this, I would probably want to take their class. I'd go, hey, I'm, I'm here. I got a two week vacation. I want to go to an event and I want to see some new dancers that I don't know personally. I haven't seen. And I just want to show up and see what I can learn. I would sit there in the front row. I probably have a mask on my head so people don't recognize me. And I would just see who would inspire me with some somewhat original moves, somewhat original swagger and styling to make me want to actually take class from them. I think that's the next challenge for a lot of instructors. It's not just to teach those who don't know how to swing dance, but really, what can you teach those who already are masters? That's the artist that I'm looking for. Those are the teachers of the future. Those are the ones who have really good ideas. And I think uh, even me having this platform like this to talk about it will hopefully inculcate ideas into some of you all's minds uh, who will be willing to step to the plate and get out there and do something new that's worth showing other instructors. So that's how I feel about this particular performance at Festi Swing Bre. I had to work on my French. Anyway, guys, what do you think about these teacher demonstrations? Are you a newer dancer and you see this and it all looks new to you? And you're just like, what is this guy talking about? I don't see the, the context. Let me know. Let me know what you thought. Because when you're new, you see things from a different perspective. Are you someone who's like me, who's been around for a long time and you've seen kind of the different styles of people and you've gotten a broader context and you can kind of agree with me and go, yeah, there's not a whole lot of boldness and creativity. I agree with you on that. So let me know what you thought. So there's a lot of different opinions out there. This is my opinion. I love to share my opinion so that those of you all are out there who might actually agree with my opinion or even disagree, might find some type of common uh, balance and some middle ground where you can say, well, yeah, well, maybe that's a new idea I need to think about so that maybe I don't fall into that trap as I'm on my swing journey. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. If you're struggling to be creative, I encourage you to check out some of my uh, free courses. I have a school online and I literally spend hours trying to come up with new ways to do Lindy Hop. I think it's a tremendous challenge and a lot of my students are up for that. They're excited because we really demystify how Lindy Hop can be difficult and we get the technique stuff out of the way. It's only a small part of Lindy Hop that really is technical. Now, of course, we can't say that because then it doesn't make money at big events, <laughs> right? So we demystify it so that you guys can actually see exactly what's objective and what is subjective in a way so that you can get to the bigger point, which is creativity and identifying who you are as a dancer so that generations 100 years from now will be inspired by the videos they see today and hopefully uh, inspire them enough to do that same pattern. With that said, guys, uh, let me know what you thought in the comment section. If I don't see you in one of my classes online, hopefully I'll get a chance to see you in the next reaction video. Take care.